Okay, hello there, I'm Dennis. Welcome to my channel, Life Home and My Linux Journeys. And in this journey, we're going to install OpenSUSE Tumbleweed on an external drive so that it can be portable and we can carry it around and install or actually boot up to it on from another machine, our host machine, boot up to it. And then you'll know, have a live environment, OpenSUSE, free to create in any way, you, which way you want. So I've installed it and I used the Dell Optiplex 790 as a host machine. Uh, let's go ahead and get over there. And here we are, we're on the host machine, which is running MX Linux, the newest version. And it's on the Optiplex 790, that's a Dell machine. And it's running XFCE if you're interested in that. We'll cat the Etsy OS release. Debian 11. All right. I stuck this disk in just for, for this video. This is not the same disk that I used to install on, but I just put it in there so we'd have something to look at. Now, first thing you want to make doggone sure of is properly identifying your USB drive and making sure of it. And here's, so far, there's two commands plus the GNOME disk utility to identify it. In this case, this disk would be 240 gigs. It recognizes 223 gigs of that. So you can use a, a US, LS USB or you can use the FDisk hyphen L and or, and or you can use the GNOME disk utility. But make sure you got that identified. So this is the USB. This is USB 3.0 drive, thumb drive with OpenSUSE ISO on it. And we're going to reboot into that ISO. And I apologize for the bad video quality. For some reason, my cam link just wouldn't, wouldn't work continuously. So it was easier just to video it on this camera here. And you can see again, that's the Optiplex 790. And it's going to brighten itself out there, but I'm going to select the UEFI disk that it recognizes. And you saw it had also the MX21 available. And it's blurry. <laughs> But the main points are clear, and you know that's that's really the part. I finally recognized that the curtains were open behind me, and it was really bright. <laughs> okay. So uh, another thing, I did not turn on my USB device or external hard drive until after I got to this screen right here. And I'm fixing to show that. So there's the device. It's a Sabrent. And I'm going to turn it on. And there's the disk. So it's, this is the 240 gig. No, no, I'm sorry. This is the... The other one was the 240. This one is only 125. So you're going to get to a EULA, End User License Agreement. Man, I wonder if I should get my head out of the way. Huh. Won't let me move it. Oh, well. Guess it's going to be in the way. And I'm going to select the desktop XFCE, or desktop with XFCE. You select yours. Now here, see, it's picking up the disk from MX Linux. And if you start with the current proposal or the existing partitions, you might have a problem. I did. So what I did was select the guided. And here you can select up to three different disks. And I wasn't aware of this, but that's pretty cool. So now it's not going to touch SDA, but it's going to do it on SDC. We're not going to enable logical volume management or disk encryption. I am going to make the default system EXT4 file system, enabling snapshots. We're going to propose a separate home partition. 
and we're going to select the ext4 for that as well and we're going to propose a separate separate swap partition and unless you got a special need for a swap partition you're going to see here that it's going to create a two gigabyte swap partition now you could actually change this go back down to the expert partitioner and change this layout any way you want it but i'm gonna leave it just like that for now it's gonna create zram anyway so it'll be good to go time zone gonna select yours you can select to manually do it or like we just did or have it do it at boot up we're gonna say next and here we're gonna create a user so at this point the install is exactly the same the only thing we did different was we selected the guided install install and selected our disk and deselected the other one i'm not going to auto log in and there is no previous user we're going to say yep and right here i'm not going to create any extra software or select any extra software and it's because once you get it installed you can go back and find all those options back in the package manager or YAST, I should say, YAST software. And my apologies again, there's the hard drive. It's flashing, it's working. Back to the install. Now, what it is, is the machine, the host machine does not have any 3.0 USB ports. However, I put a 3.0 USB card in it, and it recognizes that, but only after it boots up. The USB card is not recognized by the BIOS until after it boots up the system, then it recognizes it. So in other words, it won't boot to it. So I'm having to use a 2.0 USB, and it's a little bit slower. But I mean, it only took about probably 15 minutes from start to finish anyway. Once I got through the partitioning, the rest of it was a breeze. All right, so about right here, I'm going to pause the video until it gets a little closer. Right around the video, I just paused it and now I've started it back up. Whoa. <laughs> I guess I was just checking the camera. Installing packages, remaining one package. Saving the configuration. Now, the, arguably the most important part is installing the boot manager. All right. So as soon as this is through, I am going to just pop, uh, reboot. It'll do that automatically anyway, and I'm going to pull the USB drive out. Now, keep in mind, I did go into my BIOS previously, and I told it to boot from that disk first. So it'll boot from there without any interference from me now uh, if i wanted to change that i could just go back into the bios which i already did and select the mx linux or the host machine to boot first then just use your boot up options in my case or on a dell it's f12 all right considering it's running through a 2.0 usb drive on a solid state drive using a three point enclosure. It's not, I mean, the first time any system boots up, it's gonna take us a little bit longer, but the second time it's faster. And you'll see here, this is faster or fast for USB drive. <laughs> so that was like them uh, greeter and I signed in or logged in. And Let's run it out to see if you got your welcome screen. <laughs> I didn't wait for that. So one thing to keep in mind, SDA is the MX host drive. SDB is the drive where it's mounted, and that's what we're running off. And it's 100, showing 111 gigs. Now, you say you had to do an emergency. You want to get data off of that 
your uh, your host machine, boot into it. They're mounted right there. You probably, I think you might have to mount them. I'm, I'm gonna open it up just a second here, and we'll see. Uh, give it my password, and then you have access to whatever's on your machine, host machine that you're trying to, you know, save some data on. And you can see it even shows them on the desktop. And yep, it's gonna require a root password to mount it. And in MX Linux, this is a new install, and I don't have much. I don't have. I was lucky. I had a music file. <laughs> but that just shows you right there that you can access it. Now, if it was Windows, you I don't know, if you might have to have like NTFS progs or something, and that may be included. Now, I booted this up as well to the Toshiba laptop, and there's the light DM. It's booting into it. And I didn't realize it at the time, but I'm not, not online, but I'll correct that in just a second. And I did not install any program, so whatever I'm trying to open here is not going to open. And also, <laughs> it's not online. And it's incredibly hard to hold a camera in tight with one hand. <laughs> so again, it's mounted at, or the one we're running off of it, running off of is SDB, not SDA. SDA is your host machine. And it may be listed as something else if you're running a different kind of hard drive, disk. So now I realize since I got an error that I'm not connected, should have done that first. Point being, it's booting right up into this Toshiba laptop, which is a completely different brand name. And I also booted up to it with in the HP, the Toshiba, and the... Asus laptop, so it was three different, actually four if you count the original Dell, different machines, different brand name machines that didn't have any problem booting this up. I'm basically going to install NeoFetch and we're going to bring that up. Now that I'm online. And I hadn't even done any updates at this point on that disk. So the most important part right here is you see the first one was on a Dell Optiplex 790. This is on the satellite L75D. <laughs> that's pretty neat right there. Okay, so that's going to pretty much do it. That's how you would install it on a USB drive. And I would suggest probably not going to find a really good thumb drive. You, you might. I don't know for sure. I've, been, I've done that in the past. And a lot of them, they work, but they're very slow. And so you may find yourself in that situation. And that's the reason why I use the the uh, enclosure, or not the enclosure, but the device to uh, just plug in a, a, US, uh, a hard drive. <laughs> I'll get that out in a second here. And that makes it a little bit faster. But then again, it, you're, on, you're only going you're only going to be as fast as the uh, uh, you, the, F, the front side bus. <laughs> you're only going to be as fast as the machine will allow you to be what port you're using. If you're using a USB 3.0, it's going to be a little bit faster than a 2.0. 2.0 is going to be slow, even if it has an SSD plugged into it. It'll be a little faster than a typical hard drive, but not much. I mean, you'd be probably hard-pressed to, to notice it. And so that's the reason why I do that. Now, they make those really nice ones now, the USB thumb drives with M.SSDs dot SSDs in them. And, I mean, I can't imagine they would be blazing fast, especially if you had a computer that had a, a device, a port that would allow it to run faster, like a eSATA or something of that nature. So that's going to do it for this video, guys. Thanks very much for watching. And I'm going to just say peace. Shalom be with you. Take care, my friends.